you join me at the roadside, um, I'll just show you. Yes. Now, the petrol station doesn't have any food, uh, and I figured surely the place I want to go is not that far away. Like, surely it's not 197 kilometres. So I've just re-selected um, it on, Google, on my TomTom sat-nav and just tried again and it's dropped down to 97 kilometres which is much better It's saying I'll get there in just over an hour. But I am quite hungry. I've got my camping stove with me and it's right at the top of the bag and there's a very conveniently placed flat rock over there so no one's around. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat up some uh, chilli con carne to enjoy my chilli con carne and then I'll get back on the road because I'm getting a bit headachy and not very focused. I'll get back on the road, I'll do the final hour. It was only going to be something like uh, 70 miles to the hotel and I thought it was all good. But also because it's Switzerland, I still can't use my date. I'm here, thankfully. That was, I'm not doing that again. If I'm just so annoyed that I don't have data and it sounds like such a first world problem but like you really do need it to actually find out how long it's going to take you to get somewhere. Um, anyway I'm here at the Hard Rock Hotel and uh, it's very posh so it was well worth the drive and I got a massive burger and a beer on the go anyway but um, it's really annoying when they cut one of the biggest cut through roads. It should have only taken an hour and a half. It's dead in took it uh, took just over three hours. But the light was going when I got here and then all of the detours and turning around and stuff. So a bit of a faff. Anyway, show you a burger. Well, hello. You join me in very sunny Switzerland and uh, I'm just having a day off today, really. The hotel let me rebook the room for the same cost, which I thought was quite good. So uh, I've just been to the co-op, got some breakfast. The hotel wanted 40 Swiss francs for breakfast. And she definitely said it would be 40, not 14. Uh, 14 I could do, not 40. Anyway, I've just gone to the co-op and I've got an abundance of food for way less than that. So uh, I'm just hanging out in the square at the moment. It's very scenic and uh, I'm going to head in and go to the spa soon. So they said 20 for the spa, so I thought that was pretty good. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to relax here today and uh, chill out in the spa and uh, we'll get going again tomorrow. Now my plan for today was to go over to Stelvio Pass, but because they a lot of the passes don't open till the summer. So what I figured out is actually that um, although I am in Switzerland and I'm very near a lot of these mountain passes I just found a brilliant website that lets you check them and a lot of them are actually shut which would explain why it was so hard for me to get here yesterday because I'll show you on the screen now I should have just been able to go up here but instead I had to do this ginormous loop around so it took it from something like a 40 minute journey to an hour and a half -ish. so that was pretty long but anyway just gonna relax here today just gonna wander around and uh, go and check out the church and stuff. So, see you soon. quickest tour. There's the door. There's the bathroom. And then that's my little bed. And there we go. You join me on day nine. And uh, <clears throat> just had an absolutely lovely day off in uh, Switzerland. So there we go. That's the hotel I stayed at. Hard Rock Hotel. Brilliant. It's got some really cheesy things like if you want to rock out in your room, man, they'll deliver a Fender guitar to your room. And if you don't want to put the radio on like normal people, they'll bring a turntable to your room. But it was brilliant. And the spa was absolutely great as well. Oh, whoa, look at that. The spa was great and it was only 20 Swiss francs, which is actually amazing. I was expecting it to be like 100 and I was about to say no. 
find strange in Switzerland, although of course it's normal here. There's loads of people just walking around in their ski stuff. And what it is, is basically, obviously, if you're a local, you pay 10 Swiss francs. But if you're a tourist, you pay 90 Swiss francs. So the tourists, of course, go skiing for the whole day. Whereas if you're a local, you pay 10 Swiss francs. Look at that. You pay 10 Swiss francs, and um, it, that's nothing to these people. It is a note, but it's also just two coins. Anyway, a lot of them will just get on the bus, go skiing. Look at that view. Once they've had enough of skiing, they've done their hour or so, they'll get back on the bus, go home, and uh, continue the rest of their day, which is so strange. And it's just going to shut some of my vents because it's not as warm as I expected it to be. But wow, that was a brilliant experience. And I'm right up by the Swiss mountains now as well. And I had a bit more planned to do in Switzerland, but as I was saying in one of the intro videos, a lot of the mountain passes are shut till June, which I didn't really realise and I didn't really think would be a real thing, you know, because I think of winter as finishing in like February, March. But of course here it's very different. And you see it's um, 15 degrees Celsius today uh, and there's still loads of snow around. So actually now I can understand why all the mountain passes are still shut because this is just like a normal bit of grass at the side of a road. That's just like a normal bit of grass at the side of the road. So imagine what it's like up in the actual mountains. Anyway, right, this seems like the good chance. Here we go. And bring it back down to 80, 60 even. There we go, much better. Uh, no buses, no lorries. Yep, looks good to me. Let's go to the bottom of this. Oh, that's hard work. If you can catch me doing that, I'd probably... It's a sort of heart attack, I imagine. I don't think I'm physically fit enough to cycle up this bad boy. I think that's why they brought engine. Engine. Oh, just... Truly like nothing else I've ever seen. I might have to go and refilm my Hills Are Alive moment. Right, I've spotted the Volvo coming up, so I'm just going to wait here a sec. <laughs> yeah, that would have been me, splat, just there. what we were hoping to see. Can you see that bridge in the distance? Don't worry, I will get the drone out. Look at that, with a little train going over it. Oh, oh, so sweet. Oh, so toasty down here as well. This is like a good uh, British summer's day, actually. Oh, it's not a turn, it's just a... Is it a turn? I suppose it sort of is. Oh no! Oh! Right! I'm not going around it, I just need to turn, where, turn around somewhere flat. Right, this is where we want to park. Right, just stick her in here I guess. Right, this seems like a good plan, so I'm going to leave it here and uh, go for a little walk.
Dankeschön. Okay, bye. Thank you. And we're off. Wow. That was absolutely brilliant. And uh, I couldn't have expected anything better, really. That was just fantastic. I hadn't expected to be there for so long, but I think when someone offers to join you for the walk and they're not trying to scam you, and then, you know, the, his English was pretty great, and he's given me some absolutely lovely tea as well. So I've got to say, I am both full, quenched, and uh, I've enjoyed an absolutely scenic adventure, to say the least. He explained that he doesn't live in the van all the time, and uh, he lives in Germany, and he's just out in the van for four to six weeks. That's four to six, not four to six. Uh, and he enjoys skiing, and he showed me the ski poles actually, it's so light. I was expecting the ski things to be so heavy. But no, what a perfect, perfect way to spend a lunchtime. And now I'm packed full of stolen. <laughs> I'm uh, absolutely packed, ram packed full of stolen. And uh, I had some lovely green tea as well. I did give it a whiff, check it wasn't drugs. But uh, no, I feel as high as normal. And uh, even let me use his Wi Fi. So I could check for the route because a lot of the passes are shut. So uh, the Tom Tom sat nav is pretty good, but not that good at knowing exactly what's open. So we're just heading basically towards San Moritz. That was absolutely great. So as you saw from the footage, we walked up to one of the scenic viewpoints and I felt like it was a good time to get the drone out. So off I went. And then uh, after getting the drone out, went up to the next scenic point and that, oh, that was a walk away. Now this road, I don't know whoa, the name of it, but it's bumpy. I'm going to need to uh, give the drone a little wipe when I get back because it's covered in a uh, sticky marzipan because he gave me so much stolen and uh, he was trying to explain stolen and I said oh like stolen and he's like yes you have stolen and I was like yes very popular in the UK everyone loves a bit of stolen mate and he's like oh I thought it was only here in Germany and I was like not used to but now we've got stolen now sehr fantastisch So he's explaining that he's got four children from four separate ladies. So the man was a bit of a player, to be honest. <laughs> and he said he had a wife, and then uh, he had another wife. And then he had a girlfriend, and now he's got another girlfriend. But currently he has no wife. But <laughs> he's just a top lad, really. KTM obviously quite popular around here. I didn't really think of KTM, but of course KTM's from Austria. I can see why maybe Austria is actually quite popular around here. Obviously there's one Austrian we don't like, but the rest of them are quite nice actually. <laughs> this is Tunnel Crap Says. In 4.5 kilometers, just need to stop and get some fuel. Now let's see, does it take cash? Card. Card only, I think. Well, that was all good. Uh, it does have petrol and it does take card, but uh, I quite like to use some francs up actually. So I'm going to take a risk. The next one's in probably 20 kilometers. So I'll try that one because he thinks there's a shop there as well. But there must be something special about this road because there are a lot of people, lots of motorbikes on it all of a sudden. I've n I have not really seen many bikers around to be honest.
that sound, so full of Stalin. He was like, do you want to take it? Just take it. Just take the whole brick, mate. But uh, I think he was trying to get rid of it. I was saying, no thanks. I'm all Stalin out, thank you. Perfect. Perfect. That worked really well. Just exactly the cash I had, so that's great. That's my francs gone. I think that calls for a lovely photo stop. Alright, I've got to fly the drone here. Wow. I wasn't expecting this at all and it's so hard around every corner there's always something interesting to see and uh, we're here on Juliettstrasse and uh, it's a big old frozen lake isn't it very nice bit windy though but wow how fantastic that's not my bike hang on how fantastic right time to get back on the road and enjoy some more scenery Just can't get over that. Just so unexpected as well. It's not like I knew about that. I just knew about the pass, that it would be open and it might get me to Italy. But I had no idea I could expect such beauty. Last little peak. Wow, just starting to uh, unfreeze at that section. What a vast, incredible lake. Quick peek at the waterfall. Oh, oh. That is not what I expected at all. Right, it can't get into a habit of peeking at things while I go around the corner. Oh, I should have stopped there. Yep, yeah, just people skiing on my right. Gotta say, there's some fruity noises coming out of that jag. He's opened up his second exhaust, and that is golden. 
going to say, I'm not much into cars, but actually a Jag F-Type, yeah, I would love that. And here we go. This is a Julia Pass. believe this is a real place. Am I recording? I can't believe this is like Scotland on steroids mixed with ecstasy. It is unlike anything words can describe. There's people just skiing at the side and boy is it bright. Right, sorry, there won't be much talking in this section. I shall be focusing. get to the top I'll uh, get the drone out I think. I won't take long, I'll just fly a little just a bit above just to show you this road from the top because it's it's like a ribbon of chocolate. It's like the inside of one of those uh, twists, it's like a flake. There it is. so fresh as well even though there's all these cars in front of me it's so fresh oh. I've run out of words I've run out of just words I keep saying beautiful it is beautiful and I just run out of words to describe this place So it might start using noises, so you ready? Ooga! How's that? That should describe things quite well. Sort my gears out, there we go.
and that is it. We are going for a drone flight here. Gotta say it's getting a bit it's getting a bit breezy now. <laughs> you must be reaching the peak. I can't still can't believe what I'm seeing when I look in the mirror. so strange to be motorbiking around yet yeah, everyone's just skiing at the side of you but of course why not 